a recent question came in, and then the question the person also made the statement that they believe the proposition that uh, Giuseppe Cardinal Siri was elected Pope in 1958 is the true position. They're not sure who the Pope is now because of the uh, Cardinal Siri election. Now, personally, I've looked into the matter a great deal, especially in the late 1980s prior to the election that was held that elected me, because if Siri was Pope indeed, then it was a simple matter, submit to His Holiness. Um, so I looked into it in a great deal. I met uh, Father Peter Tran Van Quad, also known as uh, Father Quat Van Tran, I think he calls himself now. He's trying to Americanize his name. And I, it's no, nothing sinister here that I see. In any case, so what do, should we think of Cardinal Siri? Let's just take the presumption that the proposition put forward now, and I say now because this proposition was not put forward until June of 1990, is the first I've seen on it. A different proposition was put forward until that point. But let us say the proposition that Cardinal Siri was elected Pope on October 26, 1958 is true. Alright, we do know white smoke went up on October 26, 1958. United Press International even reported the election of Cardinal Ottaviani on that day. Eventually, though, what was... He said, oh no, mistakes, mistakes, mistakes. It was actually supposed to be black. Well, we had trouble with the wood stove. Come on, folks, you've been burning these things for uh, seven, eight hundred years. You'd think you'd have it down by now. Okay. In any case, white smoke went up on October 26, 1958. This is a fact, a demonstrable fact. Um, the proposition is that Cardinal Siri was elected Pope and the proposition now is that he not only was elected Pope, he accepted election and took the name Gregory, becoming Pope Gregory the 17th. Then the enemies of the church intervened and told him, if you, ex if you go out onto that balcony as Pope, the persecutions in uh, Russia and China will be increased uh, and many martyrs will be made. Siri then backed down. And the proposition is that his backing down came under force and fear, you know, like someone held a gun to his head, and thus is invalid. Well, the Siri proposition does make a lot of things easy. Let's say Siri was elected Pope October 26, 1950, and accepted election and took the name Gregory, or in it, I don't care what name he took. All right, he is now Pope. This invalidates the elections of John the Twenty-Third, Paul the Sixth, John Paul One, John Paul Two, Benedict Sixteenth, and Francis the First. This invalidates Vatican Two, its Perfidious Spirit, the New Rite of Ordination, the New Rite of Confirmation, the Novus Ordo Misse. I mean, it invalidates all the insanity we're fighting against. Okay, so Siri, let's say Siri is Pope, although there are many arguments to say it just can't be, but let's just say, in spite of the fact that he uh, was on the presiding commission of Vatican II, the, reside the Novus Ordo, which is a heretical act, but let's just say, okay, his papacy stands in place until May 2nd, 1989. You say, well, what happened then? Well, he did what other popes did. He died. The only thing is, Siri died with a major difference. During his uh, long papacy, he didn't do anything. He never did anything papal. Oh, yes, I know. Father Peter Tran Van Quat now claims that Siri appointed secret cardinals, and there were attempts to gather these secret cardinals together from June 1990 until, I'm thinking around 1992, when one of the promoters of the Siri theory backed out in favor of another Gregory the Seventeenth, the one up in Canada. 
Uh, but even if this is true, which secret cardinals are no cardinals if we look at canon law, so basically Siri didn't do anything. Siri left no successor. His papacy makes it real easy for us to wipe out the whole Vatican II. He dies May 2nd, 1989. Now we do know of one thing. I think it's June the 3rd of 1990. Father Quatt gets up in the pulpit in uh, St. Jude Shrine in Stafford, Texas and announces that uh, Siri was Pope, he had appointed secret cardinals, and that they were going to gather them together for an election. Of course, there's never any report that this ever happened. But what that does demonstrate is, according to the Syrianists, the papacy was vacant on June 3, 1989. And since they've never announced the election of the Pope until uh, the last few years, uh, Mr. David Hobson, on his Today's Catholic World website, does claim there was an election. Then tells who the Pope was, or who is, or whatever, but he's now claiming this. That there was an election sometime after June 3rd, 1990. Well, I was elected July 16, 1990. So if you do the math, according to the Syrianists, the papacy was vacant. The group that elected me proceeded in good faith belief that the papacy was vacant. Uh, something that is demonstrated by many pieces of evidence. We had proven the invalidity of Gregory XVI in Canada, of Gregory XVI in Palmer de Troya, Spain, and of a Clement to something uh, in France, who I've now found out resigned in favor of the Canadian Gregory XVI. We had proven the invalidity of their uh, appointments by apparitions, which shouldn't take a whole lot, but we investigate each and every case of any claimant to the papacy up to 1990, when we published Will the Catholic Church Survive 20th Century on January 25th. If a new claim had come up between then and July 16, 1990, we would have addressed it. We also addressed the Siri claim as it was then, which claimed his election in 1963, and in both 1978 elections. And it also claimed that he was Pope-elect. That he was elected Pope, which sends up the white smoke immediately. They came and asked him if he would accept election before he could answer the enemies of the church intervene. I told him if he accepted, the persecutions would be ramped up. And so, if he declined, and there's some doubt in these people's mind, they did decline the election in 63 and 78. Uh, such a decline of the papacy would also be under force and fear, leaving him Pope-elect. In other words, between election and acceptance. Well, Father Quat did go visit Siri. There are pictures of Quat and Siri together. I've seen pictures Quat took of Siri. Okay, there is sufficient evidence to prove that Quat did see Siri in 1988. And around June, I believe. May and June. Somewhere along in there. He also, apparently, was at the consecration in Cone on uh, June 30 of 88. In any case, according to Quat, he talked to Siri. When I questioned him, uh, fall of 88 and again in the spring of 89, he never said Siri said he accepted the election. He never said anything about that. He just simply said, we need to gain support for Siri so that he will come out publicly as Pope. Okay. If Siri was Pope-elect, I got to thinking about that later, what should have Quat done? Quat should have started out, walked in, and said, Joseph Cardinal Siri. Do you accept election? He should have looked up the Latin and all that. <coughs> and Siri should have said yes, and then ceased to be Pope-elect and become Pope. And then, it would have been simple, we just back him from there. But Quat didn't do that. He wasn't, no one advised him to do that. He did 
talked to Siri. In March of 1989, he tells me that he's changed his position. He now likes the position of Archbishop Lefebvre in regard to the Pope. So this, in my mind, is a denial of Siri. So Quat's testimony is worthless. So anything Quat tells us, we have to reject. So the facts are, there was a white smoke on October 26, 1958. Siri, who was allegedly elected on October 26, 1958, died May 2, 1989. Having performed no public act, therefore the papacy was certainly vacant the moment he died. There was no colored title. There was no possible claimant to the papacy. Uh, as for Cardinal Ottaviani, he died long before, so if UPI's report's correct, the papacy was also vacant. So on July 16, 1990, the papacy was vacant. So if Siri was Pope, or even Siri was not Pope, I am Pope. Simple as that.